please understand this is not us sitting down criticizing and critiquing the 48 laws of power debunking robert green's theories and philosophies i'm not that smart don't even think i am but when you move beyond the realm of competition and the illusionary entertainments of the ego you do realize that a lot of the things that are true inside of a lie of an experience hold no weight and no value and absolutely no benefit for you in reality. And that's what we're looking at. Law nine, win through your actions, never through argument. Demonstrate your point rather than arguing. Arguing rarely changes anyone's mind, but people believe what they see. They're also less likely to be offended. Now, this law is a little different. It's not as divisive, not as deceptive, not as aggressive as some of the other laws that we've looked at prior to. This isn't us trying to create an air of mystery and disguise our energy. This isn't us trying to make people come to us and using bait. This isn't us building our reputation because our life depends on it, guarding it with our life. This is winning through your actions. This is not being a person full of words, spewing them out in emotional ways, sporadically exploding on the people around you because they don't understand your perspective or point of view but rather act, move, produce. Seems to be good advice. And that's why you have to be careful, very, very careful in familiarizing yourself with truth in its entirety and aligning not with the portions of it that you agree with or that you feel are suitable or are needed because your ego will never guide you to what is needed to its for its destruction. Your ego will never take your hand and promote its crucifixion. Every single idea that comes from the legion of voices, the past experiences, is all based in survival of the body and the ego that you think you are. Win through your actions. Win by doing the right thing. The thing is, you can't do the right thing without thinking about all the wrong things. You can't do what another person will find pleasing and non-offensive without going into your head trying to figure out what's going on in theirs and that's a hit or miss external centered confusing way to live your life what satisfies other people is the same thing that satisfies you It's going to be hard for you to satisfy the both of y'all because both of you want to be number one. Not only number one in your life, you want to be number one in everybody's life that you're connected to. And the insecure person that you're connected to that's still walking in darkness, they want the same thing. You want somebody to make you feel good, treat you nice, do kind things for you and that's often why marriages end in divorce because both parties are looking to be catered to and typically both parties find themselves unsatisfied with the effort being applied from the other side so we've come up in our society with little catchphrases like if you're gonna get me you're gonna have to apply pressure or the bare minimum ain't gonna do it for me honey <laughs> 
why would the bare minimum not be enough for you when the bare minimum is what you extend though why why did you ever get under the impression that you were intended to receive a level of goodness that you did not first extend because when you was a child people told you little cliches that had universal value like you treat people how you want to be treated you're going to get what you give you don't treat people in ways you don't want to be treated because it's going to come back to you you, know, you were taught these little concepts you were taught about investing in returns you were taught about seed time and harvest but then you get so wrapped up in the darkness so wrapped up in your thoughts so wrapped up in what it is that you want immediately that you throw out these truthful concepts and you adopt the ideologies and the idiocracies of the dysfunctional methods that you hope will lead you to your dysfunctional appetites being satisfied when through your actions never through argument because arguing rarely changes anyone's mind rarely not rarely a lie can be shoulder to shoulder with the truth and it's still a full lie And it's not partially true. It's untrue. If something is partially true, it's untrue. If you told me or I told you, I was, you know, I was partially real. I was partially honest. Does that not mean that I'm a liar and that I'm not, I'm not real? To be something sometimes is to not be it. You're not going to change anybody's mind. Words do not teach. Words are stimulants. Words shape things up and allow for people to make observations, applications, realizations for themselves. Stop huffing and puffing, saying the same thing over and over again. Stop trying to find new ways to communicate old messages to people that you've identified as needing your help and your advice. When they're ready to receive it, you've already said it. They'll recall it. They'll apply it. They probably won't thank you for it. Probably won't even remember that you said it. They'll probably take full ownership for it like they've been trained to do. But that's okay. Because if you said it for their benefit, you said it for their good, their edification, then mission accomplished, right? What is it that you need? What is it that you're looking for? You want them to double back and tell you, hey, I know I had argued with you when you said it, but you was right. What you gonna get out of that? Besides, one of the weird appetites satisfied. <laughs> Went through your actions, arguments rarely, rarely change the way people, people think. They never do. They never do. Only a person can change what's on their mind, how they think, how they feel, and their disposition about a person, place, or thing. Nothing you say, nothing you do. So that's where Law 9, when through your actions, never through argument, misleads us with good intentions. Because it's factual. Arguments, discussions, of intense emotions, uh, back and forth debates, even casual conversations don't change people's minds. But neither do your actions. Your actions run through the filter of their past experiences and interpretation, and you're left up 
to their ability. To remove themselves from their past experiences, live in the present and see you and your actions, your motives and intentions for what they truly are. And that's not very common. <laughs> Most of us are projecting. Most of us live through the lens of projection where we harbor our past experiences and everybody and everything that we encounter runs through that lens and we interpret the information, tell ourselves what we're looking at based on what we've seen and we label things and conduct ourselves accordingly. People don't believe what they see. People don't believe what they hear. People believe what they think they know. <laughs> People believe what they've calculated based upon the voices contingent w on their past. They believe what they think they know. They believe what they think they can figure out. They believe they're intelligent enough and experienced enough to figure out when somebody is misleading them and when somebody is being honest. When somebody is valuable and when somebody has no worth. It's not about what you do. It's not about what you say. It's about what they've been through and what they've harbored and where they are in the present moment as you present yourself a living sacrifice. <laughs> Let's see if we can nip this in the bud. If you're going to sit in your head and pontificate on negative interactions that you could carry out, you might as well speak those things with your mouth because you've been trained to be so superstitious that you think as you watch these vain imaginations in your head of you being a wicked, nasty, malicious person, you think you deserve some type of kudos or some type of points or you operate from some type of maturity because you don't open your mouth and say these things anymore because you don't I, I, I could go over there and punch them in the mouth I could go over there and slap them dead in the face I could go over there and take all my stuff back but if you're thinking it you may as well go ahead and say it because it's not your words that hold the weight it's the inner conversation it's the inner dialogue that plays a part in what you produce in on the physical plane based on the ingredients that you've mixed together in the spiritual world on the inside of you. Stop thinking because you had the better presentation on the surface but had the nastier thoughts that you somehow the better person. Stop. Actually develop. Actually grow. Because you pretending to be the better person has no value. It holds no weight for you. You get no points for that. You stand no, at no point in your life to ever be rewarded for pretending to be the better person, pretending to be the bigger person. It's following the script and saying the right thing. When are you going to get your points for that? Where's your reward for that? You're better served being honest. You're better served being transparent. You're better served telling people that they've offended you or they've hurt your feelings so that y'all can make amends and y'all can come to a common solution for the both of you. Rather than pretending to never be hurt because yeah, you 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 a man, you big dog. Can't nobody touch your feelings. The people that say that they don't care what other people say and what other people do towards them or the thoughts that other people harbor about them are the ones that care the most. They walk the lightest and use the most precaution when getting ready to present themselves before other people because they don't want something said about them that they did not imagine to be in alignment with their presentation and who they have pretended to be. Stop pretending. It's just something else to do. Your schedule is busy enough. We've talked about this before. There's enough to do. There's enough to tend to. But we can get a clear picture of what we've been tied up with because if I have had to go inside of my imagination to try to find ways that I can act to become pleasing or desirable or worth compensation to you, 
and then I have to carry out the activity and then I have to monitor you to see whether it was effective or whether I need to conjure up a new plan, then when do I have time to actually align myself with truth and enjoy my experience of being an extension of the ultimate creator who left me full dominion and reign? When you got time for that? When you got time to love somebody else? When do you have time to enjoy the people that you've connected yourself to? You're always around them making observations of things that they say they need so that you can find a way to supply it so that you can become a necessity in their world and your ego can be satisfied and enhanced as you double-mindedly say, you've recognized that your ego is something that you do not want in your experience and something that is haunting you daily. Your inability to be consistent in your decisions and applications is killing you. It's you back and forth between two worlds, back and forth between opposing paradigms, back and forth between a lie and the truth, back and forth between reality and illusions, back and forth between stable and delusional, back and forth between argumentative and astute. Thinking you know and knowing you don't. And in those moments where you get so wrapped up in that divisive presentation of thinking you know and defending what you think you know with your life because your reputation is on the line, I would love for you to start recalling those moments that you're aware that you don't know, but there is one greater than you within you that does, and you can lean not on your own understanding but on the whisper that is always present because love never forsakes you under any circumstances, even if you have made your bed in hell. I can't.